All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 23rd day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. This video is uh, about institutionalism, but the title is Why Trump Couldn't Drain the Swamp. It has to do with human nature and what people build and the fall in the Garden of Eden, all uh, indirectly. But institutions are things human beings built, should be obvious, including institutional Christianity, which is a bit easier to look at because it's older. It's older than corporations. Corporations are modern construction, pretty much. They existed for certain purposes prior, but the idea of uh, 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 immortal synthetic persons created by the state and law. Uh, <laughs> I want to go back to about the time of Lincoln, I think. Oh, my. He was a disaster. Uh, but America's a disaster. And we should see that now. We should see it clearly, that America has become the center of evil in the world. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, well, where is that? Someplace around here. Oh, there it is. You know, you still hear people talking about the New World Order and what it will be. I suggest they uh, simply look at the back of their dollar bill, as long as these things still exist. Please focus. Maybe if I get my face out of the picture. Get, I'll get my eyes out. I'm gonna, I'm, I've got to figure out the camera algorithm here. Uh, you see the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. How did they know about George W. Bush's uh, uh, total information? Tia, Aunt Tia. <clears throat> By the way, Tia is Spanish, total information awareness. Tia is the Spanish word for aunt. Auntie, auntie knows, auntie knows. Yes, now George W. would have known that too because he spoke Spanish uh, or does speak Spanish. Uh, Anuit uh, Cioptus, Cioptus, my Spanish, or my Latin is utterly corroded. Uh, yes, that is Latin, for, but it means all-seeing eye. Of course, it's a Masonic symbol. The Masonic symbol of deity, or of the totalitarian state. The Masons were not Christians. Masonic religion is not Christianity. It's anti-Christianity. Don't be deceived, Masons, Christians, Southern Baptists. Masonry is anti-Christianity. Because it does not bow the knee exclusively to Jesus Christ and the God of the Bible. Its purpose isn't religion anyway. But the Great Seal, I believe uh, that this is pretty much the work of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Benjamin Franklin. At the bottom, the, this, the, uh, you have the unfinished pyramid with the all-seeing eye over it. I can't remember, is there 13 stacks of, of stones? Not that it matters. Uh, what's, I probably can't read the date. I'm going to guess it's 1776. At the bottom of the pyramid is inscribed with a with a date. And uh, the contrast is not sufficient. I need my need a magnifier for that. Anyway, uh, doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, Novus Ordo Secularum. 
secular arm. Now, some people in the government have claimed that doesn't mean a new world order. Yes, it does. It absolutely means new world order. The word world, as it's used, especially in the King James Version often, refers to not only the uh, a physical the physical world, but the age, the it, it, new order of the ages. Secularum, new world order, new order of the ages. New order of the world. Yep. Novus, new ordo, order. Secularum, of world, of the, of the, of man's world. New order of society. Yep, right on the back of your dollar. So, so when did this come about? I, I should have looked that up ahead of time. But I believe on the, on the bottom layer of the stones of the pyramid, I believe the date is 1776. Uh, if I had... No, I put brought that in the house. I don't have one handy here. I don't have a macro lens on the camera. I do it. But it does. I don't know. So you, you can look on your own. You'll need a magnifying glass. The bottom layer of the of the stones on the pyramid. If I get that up over my eyes, there, there it focuses better. There is a uh, a date in Roman numerals. And it starts with an M, so that would be, I believe, I think it's 1776. Yeah, there's a reason for that. New order, New World Order, 1976. No, 1776. Unless I've got the date wrong. Why? Because there was a existing world order, and England was part of that world order. Europe was part of the, the world order. Uh, much of the Americas were part of that order. That order was Christendom. Institutional state Christianity. State slash papal slash, you know, Western Christianity mostly because the, the East had a little problem. They had been overrun by the Muslims. The Constanti uh, Constantinople was, uh, Byz the Byzantine Empire was no more. The Roman Empire was no more. When Constantinople fell, that was the end of the Roman Empire because Constantine, Constantinople was the new Rome. It was the capital of the Roman Empire the new capital. Old Rome was let to decay, was given to the, or the bishop of Rome led his decaying city. But he managed to, to dominate uh, Western Christianity through the institutional system that had been created uh, through Constantine. Up until the Theodosius was really, uh, the, the popes at first had no authority, really. They're just the bishop of Rome. But then as Rome abandoned, the Roman Empire abandoned the, uh, the West, pretty much, and Rome, uh, the old city, to decay, uh, focusing on the center of commerce on, in the East, uh, the, uh, the, the pope pretty much... Uh, ended up with the authority as everything else collapsed. With the collapse of, of the Roman Empire in the West, the Pope was the only thing left. And so he sort of provided a central government in a, of a sorts. But that's the, the, the West. Too, and see, people that are raised in the West don't know anything about the history of the world. We think Roman Catholicism, you know, the, the Catholic Church claims we are we're the original Christianity. No, you're not. It's amazing. And I know this, uh, it's like one of the slogans of, of Roman Catholicism is Rome never changes. Really? <laughs> that That's like watching mainstream media and, and listening to the nightly lies that the, the, the uh, Ukrainians are winning. They're winning. Really? Really? 
I don't know where you're getting your information on it, but if you look, you can find people on the ground, like in Mariupol, reporting, American reporters that have been living there for years who are not funded by a corporation. Uh, Patrick, what's Patrick's last name? Lancaster. Patrick Lancaster. Who has YouTube channels, PL. Patrick Lan Look up Patrick Lancaster. You'll get the straight poop on what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, In-person interviews of people there on the streets with bullets whizzing around him, okay? So th this is a guy who's putting his body at serious risk. Uh, and he's he's out there with the uh, the uh, like the uh, Donetsk uh, forces uh, the uh, and the Russians and that. So, but he's uh, one of the reasons he's there is was originally back in 2014. I think he went there to begin reporting on what was really going on in eastern Ukraine. And so, if you want the real poop direct from the area, Patrick. Lancaster. Uh, he's probably on others too besides YouTube. Like we all are going into others too like Rumble because, well, we know why. <laughs> and you know why. Because of cancel culture. But there, there's a thing. See, lies are fragile because the light will expose them. They're, they're like... Uh, they're like how COVID can provide survive sunlight. It just sunlight destroys it in seconds. It's fragile. It's just some genetic material in a lipid coating. It cannot stand ultraviolet radiation. That sunlight will do it in, break all those molecular bonds, and all of a sudden it's worthless. Can't do anything. Which is why you go out in the sun. The idea of people out in the sun with masks on, really? You've got to be kidding me. The sunlight's hundreds of times more effective than a mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, the... Uh, see, now I got over on that. How did I get... I, I was on... Because that's what's going on in the world. Okay. Ukraine is the center of activity, the center of the conflict between the East and the West. Uh, the world is shaking. The world is being reordered before our very eyes. And the the transition in Russia, Russia is returning to its roots with Putin's assistance. Russia is returned to Christendom. They have abandoned secular, atheistic uh, government, and they've returned to Christianity, to institutional state Christianity, even in in a form, in a in a slightly weakened form, but it's still uh, because Putin recognized. Now I don't know about Putin's personal relationship with God. It's possible. <laughs> it's like like Constantine. There's questions about. That. But I mean, if if you're a, a a Christian ruler, I mean, you're going to have to do things that you would probably, as a Christian, not need to do, not want to do. But as a ruler, you might need to do them. Like invading a, a neighbor who's gone seriously astray. I mean, I, I look at... I might as well just see if I can't get banned from YouTube. Uh, I think they've, they've let up because they've got... Patrick Lancaster is on, I mean, <laughs> on YouTube. They haven't banned him yet. But... I look at Putin, if I put myself in his shoes as a born-again Christian, I don't know what I could do different. It's just like the the, 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 the situation with Mariupol. Now, they, they the Russians could have simply destroyed that plant in a single airstrike with non-nuclear weapons. They got some humongous. They have the father of all bombs, okay? Assuming that's not propaganda. The, the Russians have been really straight. I mean, you look at RT, I think the reason it's banned in the West is there's way too much truth in it, a current, uh, uh, including what's going on in countries outside of Russia. They're pretty straight shooters as far as uh, information. It's 
unlike ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC, uh, YouTube, and some of these other things, uh, Facebook, as far as uh, what the corporation puts out, like, can, can I finally get away from the earth worship message that was on yesterday all the time? No, I don't worship the earth. God made it. God will preserve it. Man's insignificant as far as man separated from God. Yeah, that's the problem with secularism. Man has no meaning. See, man, you cannot have meaning apart from God, from the Creator. Nothing has meaning apart from God, which is the reason for all the confusion in the West, the gender confusion, the identity confusion. People trying to create an existential identity. Well, existentialism is exceedingly, it, it has no foundation. Existentialism is a philosophy, it's an anti-philosophy that has no foundation for anything except the will to exist, the will to power. It's, it's di directly related to Nazism and, and uh, uh, nihilism. That was a precursor, nothing, you cannot... There's, there's no truth, no meaning, no nothing. And existentialism is just taking that as given and saying, yeah, but uh, we have to live anyway. So we're going to choose to exist in spite of it being irrational. So everything is reduced to irrational self-image, existence, uh, reality only exists in your head. This is nonsense. Might work for sci-fi movies, but not in reality. A two-by-four alongside your head will introduce you to reality. Whether or not you believe the two-by-four two is there. See, it's just like Joe Biden must be an existentialist. As we saw the other day on that video, that, wow, that man is uh, lost in more ways than one. But when he turned, let's see, he turned to his right and extended his hand to shake hands with somebody. But there was nobody there. And he gives a blank look a little bit, and he, he looks around and like, where am I? <laughs> and then he sort of totter, wanders off. It's like, wow. But just because he, see, my point was that, that he believed there was someone there to shake his hand. Or had been told that somebody would be there to shake his hand. I don't know. It could have been a staff slip-up. Uh, but it's like, it doesn't, it not, it, see, just because he believes somebody was there to shake his hand does not, not mean somebody was actually there, okay? That's the point. That's the point. There wasn't anyone there. There'd be a lot of work to try to get them out of the picture. So if 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 the media starts scrubbing people out of the pictures... Oh, not that you can't do that. I mean, you can do that with with uh, Adobe Premiere or probably uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, or one of those uh, f certain effects editing programs. You can you can remove objects, <laughs> but I don't. Which which makes media even more unreliable. Okay, brothers and sisters, you have to realize out there that a lot of people don't know how much you can manipulate, not just photos, but videos. It's a lot of work, though. And there's usually, if you look close enough, some things aren't quite right. If you know what's supposed to be there, like, wait a minute. But yeah, you, you can remove objects that you don't want in a, in a video, necessarily, to a certain degree. Um, it's just photo editing, but you do a whole strength. You know, this is all automated now. It's pretty easy to do uh, if you are skilled at it. <laughs> Otherwise, you fumble around a lot. But why would you want to do that? I mean, the, the, but the thing is that uh, reality is not what's, what you believe it is. Reality is what's out there. What's, reality is what God has created and what man has abused. <laughs> That's reality. It's not just you. The, the, the existentialism is the ultimate in uh, 
neurosis because it is totally as a it's an anti-philosophy because it doesn't believe that truth exists so it can be discovered rather it, truth is only in your own mind that is an anti-philosophy and it's totally neurotic to use psychological language self-centered in the extreme and if your existence is all tied up in what you and you try to and existentialism says because there is no objective truth you've got to create your own truth your own values your own reality and you can't tolerate somebody else coming around and and reminding you that 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 your reality is not reality that, that you can't do that that you are not the entire universe that you're not god and that's why they cancel people because people come along and and interrupt their little their the snowflake world you know they that they create for you in university <laughs> so you notice that most of these people that are that are into this stuff are university graduates huh i think you've been peddled a lie at your own expense can you imagine that charging people tens of thousands of dollars maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars to brainwash them and turn them into mindless idiots go to university lose because a mind is a terrible thing to keep lose your mind yeah well that's not uh, well i was told slight rabbit trail when i, I was taking a course in sociology and the, I, I was frequently, there was two classes I struggled with. Now, calculus, no problem. Computer uh, science, no problem, except that I always had to correct the instructor. Um, compared to politics, no real problem there. Economics, no problem there. I mean, we didn't get into, I didn't get into real serious debates with anybody there most of the students were asleep and the professors usually appreciated that i paid attention and would challenge them with questions or maybe disagree with them because i wasn't just a high school graduate at that point so had a few years on me not many but a few <laughs> uh so I had been in the military. So out of that, you come there like, hey, wait a minute. You're about my age. You haven't been in the military. I have. It's like, what do you know? You know, and I, I, I've worked in ass on assembly lines. I've, I've worked in all kinds of different positions already. Uh, and so compared to somebody that's been a student all their life, what do they know? They're, they're, they've lived in a bubble. Bubble babies. Maybe that's better than snowflakes. Bubble babies. But the snowflake is apt. It's, it's not really a pejorative. It's a descriptive of the fragility of an existentialist mindset. It can't tolerate heat. It can't... It, it melts. Because if you have to create your own identity... It, it's it's but you're surrounded by a a universe a world filled with billions of other people and if they have their own identity and it's not identical to your own identity well then you've got conflict stress and that is why liberalism is apparently evolved into totalitarianism You know, some of this is ad hoc, too. I don't know what I'm going to say. So, it, but it's true. because it, Wow. That's why the, 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 those that cry tolerance, they're crying tolerance because you must tolerate their identity, their worldview, their self-creation, and affirm it. But they must cancel those that don't because they're fragile. They're snowflakes. They can't tolerate facts that disagree with their self-identity, their self-created universe. They're trying to be God 
and they're not. In the presence of other people who are trying to be God when they're not. It's a mess. Look at America. Look at this. This is God's judgment on a society that deliberately gets rid of the knowledge of God. Suppresses the truth he's made known. In Europe and the United States is where it's really heavy. This is what's going on. That's why. The Bible explains why. But on a psychological or philosophical level, it's, it's the existentialism that's taken over. There is no God. You, see, you cannot be a Christian existentialist. That's absurd. <laughs> Just like Christian atheists, that's absurd. You know, in, in, in Canada, there's a, a United Church of Canada, which is sort of Anglican-ish, I guess, a minister that is an atheist. A minister of what? The institution. That's all. I guess that makes sense in a weird, weird way. So uh, the those that are crying out to, for the right, their rights or individual rights, can't tolerate anybody else to have any individual rights because they're not able to bear anything that challenges their identity, their self-created identity. Obviously, existentialism is a dead end. Basically, it's saying nothing means anything, so the only rational thing is suicide, but don't do that. That's an existentialist. you got to find your own reason to live. Or you could simply open God's book, and he'll tell you all the answers to the great questions of life in the first couple chapters, really. And why thing is things are such a mess? Yep, so Christian existentialists. <laughs> that would be weird. That's worse than a Christian atheist. Uh, there are people that try to do that, too. But this is, you see, this is a difference between real Christianity and, like, woke Christianity. Real Christianity in the Southern Baptist leadership is, say, real Christianity has an identity. That identity is Jesus Christ. Christ is my identity. Everything else can go, but that. You know, like this body, this is going to go. It's going all the time. <laughs> it reminds me all the time it's going. Uh, but I have an identity that's in Christ. I have a life that's in Christ. That's eternal. I have a mind in Christ that's eternal. Uh, I have a spirit that's eternal. Given by God. I have God's spirit dwelling in me. My identity is already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's my identity. My identity is, is eternal in Christ. There, there, there's no, that's not going to, nothing can shake that. Nothing. Read Romans. Is it chapter 9 where Paul Wax eloquent about that, or is it chapter 8? <clears throat> Nothing could take us out of the hands of God. No created thing. So, see, my identity is, is not... I. People can... Atheists, uh, Muslims, all these other things that might claim to challenge what I believe... Okay, my relationship with them is, yeah, I know what you believe, but, uh, you know, really, that's not a very found, good foundation to live on. So it's just love would call me to, to remind them there's something better than what they've got. But the, the, uh, the snowflake identity cannot tolerate anything because it's so fragile. The existentialist idea is, is so fragile. These guys were all uh, basically suicidal people that were trying to figure out why not to to terminate themselves. Go back to the... They came from Nazi Germany, too. Refugees. Bad. But the, why did Germany become Nazi? Because they'd forgotten God. Yeah. <sighs> But why couldn't Trump drain the swamp? 
institutions. Institutions. And the American dollar there, the 1776. See, in Christendom, the re- Christianity as an institutional religion, as a societal state religion, goes back to Constantine. A previous video I just posted. Uh, what a, um, two, Christ- two forms of Christianity, two purposes. That's the title of it. It's on YouTube and Rumble. So I talk about the distinction between those two forms of Christianity, biblical New Testament Christianity, the Christianity of Jesus and the apostles, for what they taught, what you have to have, the the spiritual reality of that relationship with Christ, living relationship with Christ, not simply a doctrinal thing, not simply a commitment to an institution or something done through sacraments, but something God does in you. Versus uh, institutional state religion, which uh, which might be Christianity, of a form, that the, it serves a purpose, not of saving sinners, but of, although that can be integrated into it in a sense, but of providing a cohesion in society, Constantinianism. Uh, that's one of the reasons that Constantine uh, both legalized Christianity and then favored Christianity, and then after a generation or so, it became the official and only tolerated religion. A particular kind of Christianity, too. And that's why in uh, uh, the history of that religion, the institutional Christianity, you have persecution of other Christians, uh, genocide, uh, wiping out others, that especially Christians that had real Christianity, <laughs> because it's, it's this, uh, institutionalism is fragile, too, because it's not true. Institutions are systems of power that God has not created, God has not ordained. So when people, because they think it's a good idea, start to build a structure to basically survive themselves, to uh, create a form of immortality, if you will, uh, they they create structures, they're called corporations nowadays, that... uh, uh, are a structure outside of human beings, and they're outside of God. They have no spirit. They have no life in themselves. And these things, because they are structures, uh, you could almost say they're systems of, of law. They're systems of power. Uh, they function like law does and provide structure and order and everything else. But these things naturally attract people that are attracted to power, which means they attract, they attract uh, sinful human beings. And over time, these things not only grow, but they tend to uh, create a culture of their own. People talk about corporate culture, and it's true. It's true. And to a degree, the person that in charge of the corporation, usually the person that starts it, can affect that culture. But the, the corporate cultures, as far as I can see, always tend in the same direction as societal structures, societal corporations, uh, uh, cultures. It, to, they tend to decay because they have no real life in them. They have no source of life, so they always decay. They're, they're, part, they're made up of sinful human beings who are decaying too. But it, it always tends, the way of the world because it's separated from God, tends toward corruption and evil. And when you create an institution, what happens, especially over time, as in human beings, we we tend toward corruption. (coughs) We tend... (coughs) Sinners, especially some, they're not all identical, but we we never, uh, until... We're never on an upward path until we reckon, are reconciled with God. We are all heading downhill, downgrade in sin, too. 
we corrupt ourselves. Uh, we tend to give ourselves over to things that, you know, we're born into this world without God, but not without God's light. But babies, although they, 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 they're selfish, but that selfishness can go in some really bad directions, too, and tends to enslave us to sin. Sin is a form of is, is a system of slavery too, as you all know. It's really easy to form a bad habit, but it's very hard to form a good habit. Why is that? You ever considered that? But so we, uh, one of the problems is, and why I brought uh, this out the, uh, in the last video, the the Great Seal of, of the United States, a, a new world order, new order of the ages. Actually, is what it says. No list order secularum. Uh, and it has the date on the Pyramid of 1776, I believe, with the all-seeing eye at the top. Both a Masonic symbol and a symbol of the NSA, I believe. I might be wrong there. Uh, uh, George Bush with his TIA, George W. Bush, uh, total information aware awareness. So it's not Uncle Sam, it's Aunt TIA that's watching you. Auntie Tia. Okay, people that speak Spanish know. <laughs> um, Tia is Spanish for aunt. But institutions cr form a culture, and it's a decaying culture because of sinfulness of humanity. But it 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 is becomes more and more institutional and less and less human over time. Uh, corporations I, working for a small business is different than working for a large corporation. Small businesses is, is a living thing. You're dealing with living persons. A corporation you're dealing with a structure, an institution, and the people just happen to be there. There are the ants in the ant hill, but the ant hill is the institution, and, and they become almost immortal, like the Rural Electrification Association. <laughs> Government programs—they seem to never go away. They, they, the the institution has its own will to live, and its will to power. That's got good. And they're not human. They are inhuman things. They, they're machine-like. They don't have a soul. A corporation does not have a soul. It's not a real person, in spite of what the courts say. It's, a, it's an evil thing uh, when corporations are given rights and allowed to meddle in politics. Not metal, but uh, more than metal. <sighs> the courts have gone nuts too. The uh, but the the institutions, because they 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 tend they they always tend toward corruption. And they tend to become less and less human, especially as their size increases, become centers of corruption. And they have, again, a will to live in themselves. The, the people in there want to continue it because that's their livelihood, that's their jobs. And they think that they're the most important thing in the world. That's their identity. Their identity becomes tied up with the corporation and their jobs. That happens with lots of people. Um, people that retire don't know what to do with themselves, uh, which is common. That that's not retirement is not a paradise, by the way. It's like that. That's the biggest thing. What what do I do now? <laughs> I, where's my purpose for being? You know, when you, when you're younger and you got a family and stuff, well, you got to take care of your family. You got you got a purpose, and and the other stuff is like, okay, how can we find time for ourselves? Uh, but once you retired, then okay, what do we do with all this time? It's not great. I mean, 
how much you, you, so you try different things oh well, let's go fishing let's go do this or do that and they find out well that's not it at least for christians it's like you can't find your purpose is, is god ha you have to seek it for god in god really because there's nothing else there's nothing else out there that'll satisfy it's all just emptiness vanity as the preacher said in the old testament uh, in Ecclesiastes, vanity of vanities, all is vani vanity, w uh, emptiness, worthlessness. Out under the sun, in other words, out apart from God. So, but the 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 institutions, because they have this life of their own, and the, and they they form as, as a, in a culture. Uh, I never did finish that thought about a sociologist professor. That I, anyway, he, he mentioned in sociology class, and I had a, a issue with him, that the, the purpose of education was to socialize people. And I think, really? I thought it was to educate people. Boy, was I wrong. Now, it's to conform you to the world, to conform you to society. And in corporations, the corporate culture, there is a corporate co culture that will conform you to the culture of the corporation. So you might go there with high motives and ideals, but if the, uh, if the corporation is corrupt, if the culture of the corporation is corrupt, they will corrupt you. Which is why the CIA and the NSA and some of these others are CIA, uh, they need to be eliminated. Uh, the FBI needs to be eliminated. None of these things are constitutional anyway. They need to be eliminated because they're toxic. The way they're set up guarantees corruption and evil. It's not just that they have power that's not lawfully theirs. It's they, they are protected by a shield of darkness, especially like the NSA and the CIA. I mean, if, when these things were in the military, like the CIA, when they, instead of a central intelligence agency, you had, you had military intelligence, you had the Army and the Navy. They have their own intelligence things. And they were small, and they were restricted in purpose to military stuff. But with the CIA, all that was off, and they were covered with a cloak of darkness. So nobody knows what they're doing, not even the president. How can he? He only knows what they tell him. Who's going to investigate the CIA? The FBI? <laughs> Who's going to investigate the FBI? See, you, you've created these things that are not truly accountable, and that's why they cannot... You have this corporate culture, this institutional culture. It's just like the Vatican. The Vatican is utterly corrupt, according to Roman Catholic sources. Uh, Vigano, Archbishop Vigano, said the Vatican is run by a, a homosexual mafia. To use his words, a homosexual mafia runs the Vatican. Now, he's an archbishop. He was in the Vatican for years. Who am I to argue with Vigano on something like that? But that, that's institutional corruption. And so, and I know, I've, I've heard accounts that priests that are straight, uh, Cisgender is what they call it. I don't know if that applies to priests at all. That sought to become priests said seminary it was terrible because they were all trying always the the homosexual culture there was always after them. Uh, so the, the, the culture will try to socialize you into the culture of the institution or the nation or the university. And these things are always on a downgrade path I, because of the sinfulness of human beings and the fact that they're not planted by God. They're not his creation. They're man's creation. Sinful man's creations. Even among Christians, when you create institutions to further something, it's usually like some particular idea or particular doctrine or particular experience or 
a particular brand of Christianity, set of Christian beliefs, uh, you, uh, 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 the, uh, what are they called, distinctives. It's like, why is there a division between orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism? Because the because Rome instituted some unique distinctives. They made some changes on their own and set themselves apart. So that's, uh, institutions do that. And you can't, you can't fix it. It's, they're basically permanent because of their socialization of people coming into the institution conforming you to the 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 uh the culture of the institution they are constantly renewing themselves and perpetuating themselves so you can't in order to to drain the swamp which is the institutions that actually control washington that are the government the the, the institutions whether it's the cdc or the the state department or uh, is it HHS now, or what is it, or the Health Education, Health uh, Department of Education, uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs? All these things, you can't fix them because of the institutional culture and self perpetuation. The only thing you can do is abolish them, which requires a revolution. So Trump was basically elected to be a revolution but he didn't have the power in order to do this and the president at most only has eight years it requires an entire revolution of society where you have to have a it requires a revolution that where you overthrow these these uh, these non-human entities that have a perpetual existence and twist people to conform to them which is what the uh, the, the the American revolution was about it wasn't simply about uh, freedom from the king it was overthrowing institutional state religion too And a lot of other things. But it doesn't have the answer because the problem is sinful humanity, the sinfulness of human beings, and they'll just create new the new problem all over again. So you create a you substitute if you have a secular republic or system of government, you will substitute a secular religion civil religion for the say state christianity which provides a better foundation even if it's highly imperfect and not true christianity uh that is a real thing of uh is difficult thing to deal with uh, the bible doesn't give us an instruction on that because true christianity always is going to there this the uh, secular the institutional christianity always is going to be at odds with true christianity because it perceives true christians as a threat to their to their existence because we don't need them we don't need the priesthood we are the priesthood true christians we are the priesthood we are the kingdom of god and they claim to be these things, but they're not. That's what makes us a threat. Because we are the reality and they aren't. Now, there can be an overlap, but it's not a comfortable overlap. So, I, you know, you, you, God help Putin. That he'd have the wisdom to navigate this. That this is a this is a difficult mess. I can tell you that. Uh, Putin would have the wisdom because he's 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 been. Uh, uh, he claims to be a Christian. He claims to he's he's Russian Orthodox. He was baptized into that at two years old. He's he's uh, 
Uh, Russian Orthodoxy is not the official state religion, but it is the f state's favored religion uh, because of the history of Russia. And Putin recognizes there's a, a there needs it needs to have the a glue, and secularism demonstrated it's no glue. It's, Russia had seventy years of communism; they rejected it. There's still a communist party there. There are still atheists in Russia. And they're not illegal or anything, but the the. the the experience of the 20th century tells us that godlessness does not provide a cohesion. The same thing's happening in China. Uh, Xi is attempting to move back toward Maoism uh, because you had the cult of Mao, a personality cult, because atheism has no, is, there's no glue to it. It has nothing to hold people together. There has to be a common faith, a common system of, of uh, authority that comes from something above human beings. Because why is your opinion worth more than mine? I mean, that's a problem. It's like the Pope. Why should I listen to the Pope? Who is he? Who is he? He's just a man. He makes all kinds of pretentious claims, but he's just a man. And those claims aren't true. That makes him a liar. Why should I listen to him? You know, that they, the, the Roman Catholic priesthood claims to be able to transmute bread and wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. I say, prove it. Besides, I'm a priest. Every Christian, every true Christian, every born-again Christian, man or woman... Our children, you're priests of God. Why? Because you can come before the very throne of God in person, into his very presence, covered with a priestly garment that is the blood of Jesus Christ and the authority of Jesus Christ, and intercede for yourself and for your brothers and sisters and for the world. Roman, Most Roman Catholic priests can't do that. And the Pope can't do it. He can't. He's nothing. God does not listen to the Pope. Have you noticed? Pope said, please, no more COVID. He listens to the Pope as much as he listens to Kenneth Copeland. You have to wonder, why did the Pope reach out to Kenneth Copeland? Birds of a feather flock together. That's why. <laughs> and both of them are antichrists. They're, they're, they're substitutes. They're phonies. They claim what's not theirs. And they're corrupt to the core, <laughs> both of them. The kindred spirits, I guess, recognize they both serve the same uh, dark angel. But uh, the uh, but Trump can't drain, or no president can. They're only there for four or eight years, maybe less than four years, depending on what the swamp does. You can't you can't deal with the problem of institutionals. That, that's why I think, and Christians are forbidden to take up the sword and overthrow government anyway. So. The only answer, the answer to this, unless somebody else rises up and overthrows the government. Okay, but the only answer is you've, you've got to clean the house. Even, even uh, Jefferson, who was a deist, mentioned, so this is, even they were aware of the problems because Jefferson said the, the tree of liberty must be watered with, the, with blood, the, the blood of patriots periodically. In other words, you have to have a revolution every now and then because this, this thing grows on its own and to prune it back requires more. The government will not prune itself. It will not reduce itself. You'd have to have such an overwhelming election of Christians. We are a tiny minority in this country. Real born-again Christians probably are no more than 5% of the population. And the rest of you out there can rejoice. Not really, because if we were in charge, it would be better for everyone, even for minority communities like the LGBTQ+++, because we want people to be treated justly. 
and we recognize that we're not trying to impose the law of Moses. Now, those that want to create theonomy, they're not Christians because they don't recognize the authority of Jesus Christ in the covenant. Jesus said he came to save sinners, not to destroy them. So there, it, Christians can be tolerant. Non-Christians can't. Because we recognize that, that God's purpose is not to destroy you. His purpose is for your salvation. So we can tolerate people recognizing God's purpose, I mean, God's grace, and, and the fact that God has saved us, we were, were once unsaved. Now, whether Christians have wisdom is another question. And the Bible doesn't give us instructions on how to govern the world because that's not really going to take place till Christ returns. And that's why I think the, the only answer to draining the swamp is that Christ himself returns because the swamp is the entire world too. And everything's gone so bad and so corrupt and is on the, on the abyss of destruction that uh, that's the only answer. As Christians have been praying for 2,000 years, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is the only real answer. Not elections, not democracy, not the United Nations, not uh, the the uh, shenanigans and machinations of people like George Soros or the the global elite or the neocons and neo libs. None of these are answers. Democ none of these things can hold anything together. The United States is on a course to self-destruct. So is the world. Only Christ is the answer. And institutions, because of their nature and their culture and their own will to live, and they're filled with sinful people, you can't. You'd have to destroy it. It's like it's they're like dandelions. You have to keep weeding them. You have to keep poisoning them because they just keep popping up. It's because of the sinfulness of man. The only answer to that is Christ. And you can have that answer now if you do not know him. If you do not have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you do not know that you've been reconciled to God through faith in Christ. You can have that if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus was risen from the dead. You want to be reconciled to God. Call out to God to save you because salvation is a miraculous work by God in himself, in person, and he will do it. Whosoever shall call upon him shall be saved. 